Hey guys, I hope you're doing well. So in today's video, as I've already you know, promised that I'm going to do a video about um, color correction and color grading to my Osmo Pocket 3. So in this video is all about my workflow that I'm using and on DaVinci Resolve, of course. Yeah, that's my, uh, my go-to software for editing and also for color correction and color grading. So with no further ado, let's jump into DaVinci Resolve and yeah, let's get started. As you can see here, we are inside DaVinci Resolve, all right? I have four different clips here. So these are the, the flat profile or the log profile, D-Log M, and here already edited version, okay, as you can see here. Yeah, let me show you um, here, the before, after, before, after. Next one, here, before, after, before, after. This is uh, inside my room, my studio, if you can say so. Here, before, after, this footage was shot with the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 and all the other, other footage. And this one was shot during the day, and um, it was one of the one of the shots um, in my YouTube series. Um, as you can see, if you are new here, I've been doing a new series called uh, Cafe Vibes and Signature Sips. So th this is one of the cafes I did a video about. It's A9 Coffee. As you can see, this is the before after before after as you can see the colors are really vibrant everything was spot on all right next one here this is at night the same cafe at night before after before after okay now let me show you how i do it uh this is my workflow this is my note tree if you are familiar with Photoshop, nodes are the same as layers in Photoshop, okay? So these nodes can help you um, get the, the creative look that you want. You know, the color grading, the color correction, the exposure, white balance, sharpness, noise reduction, whatever. It's all in here, all right? So first of all, I start the first node with CST which stands for, let me see here, in the FX panel, color space transform. All right, so I drag it here. So what I used to do is, as you can see here, what I've done for the first one. Um, yes. So I start with DJI D gamut, and then input gamma, I use Rec. 709 because uh, D log M is a Rec. 709 with customized curve, all right. Um, yeah, so let's jump here and do this. First, the input color space, try to find the DJID gamut and then input gamma rec 709. Yes. Here, we use the DJI, where is it? DaVinci white gamut and here white, DaVinci Intermediate, okay? As you can see here, you can see that the image is really flat, the colors are washed out, so it's not good. All right, but don't worry. So what I do is that, I first I put a color space here, and then I put another color space here in Rec. 709, the same color space. Let me clean the, the no tree. Okay, I put it here, let me make it bigger. Okay, so what did we do in the first one, if you still remember? We did DGID gamma for input color space and then input gamma we did Rec. 709. Now we will change, okay? So we can get the, um, let's say, yes. Yeah, so here we will do the DaVinci white gamut and here we will use um, DaVinci intermediate. And here Rec. 709 and here Rec. 709 gamma 2.4 
and if you can see now the colors are are good all right it's like we shoot with the phone okay so nothing changed all right good so nothing changed as you can see just a little bit of color and no contrast nothing now let's go with the exposure with the exposure first i go with the color wheels here here we have lift gamma and gain i try the gain means highlight so i try to you know, to drag the the highlights a little bit around 92 was good now the shadow should be around minus two to give it a little bit of contrast but i still see that my yes my my highlights are clipping a little bit especially in this in this place here so what i should do i will go to the curve and drag it a little bit the problem is that here i need to push the midtones a little bit okay and the shadows a little bit so try to make an s curve all right make an S curve that will help you get what you want all right don't go too crazy make it yes just a tab all right now I think this one is good if you still find some highlights are blown out try to, to reduce here around minus 20 and for the shadows I will go with the 10 all right everything is good now white balance what i used to do is that i like the my image to be a little bit warm so i got i added 30 30 percent here and yeah now i'll go with the lot for the lot i'm using i already some of them are i bought them and some of them are free online i got them so what i used to do is i work with the orange and teal as you can see here it's orange and teal I go with number two and I put it here but the image is not that good okay you see a little bit contrast but I go here for opacity the key output is the opacity I go for 0 0.500 which is like 50% opacity it's good nice I'm not going for for the skin now I'll go for the look and I will do I will clean my yes my note tree so I can see everything now you can go here and write look or film look creator drop it here you see everything is dark again go for 0 0.5 for each and default no effects and also here for the film look go for 0 0.5 I like cinematic, it's good, it gives a bit warm color, but vintage, if you want to go for a film look, it's good, but cinematic for me goes perfectly fine. For others, I don't use them. And I go straight to richness, here is the color setting. I like to bump up the, the richness of the colors, but if you can see, my face becomes a little bit yellowish to orangey in in one in one side but it's okay i have a skin node so i can fix that and what i like is here the film gate i like the cinematic look of this one so i will go like here so i can see everything all right so i go a little bit here and do this go back all right so the borders are perfectly aligned good now so this is what I mostly do I still have sharpness sharpness is easy to add you just go to this tab here it's called blur and go to the third one or the second one is that means sharpness you see the label sharpen so here I go a little bit uh, 29 0. 0. 0.29 and here I go 0. 0.6 uh, 
as you can see, so I can add more sharpness because uh, on DJI Osmo Pocket 3, I always reduce the sharpness into minus two and the noise reduction into minus two. So I don't want that digital look like a camera, like a, a smartphone. So yeah, what I, what I still need here is the skin tones. For the skin tones, I don't need this one now. Let's clean. For the skin tone, I just go here. Yeah, this tab, this is new one. I don't know if it's in a free version, but this one is a studio version. Um, yeah, I like to, to drag this one a little bit for the skin. You can see here, now it's not yellowish anymore. Let me show you for more details. Now look here. When I drag it down, you see my face will, becomes gray. But when I do this, it becomes warm and warm again. So around 88 is fine. Yeah, for the noise reduction, what I go for is I go to this motion effects. And for, for the frames, I go around four. And for the temporal threshold, I go for 49 or let's say 50, yes, and it goes the same. Here, now, the image becomes a little bit smooth and also no noise will be in your image. So that's it for this one. And what I do next, if I want to, I just copy, okay? I copy the, the nodes and I go here and apply it for the same one, okay? But as you can see here, the colors are a bit blown out, okay? What we do here? First, we go back to the, we go back to the look and reduce uh, color richness, you see? Yes, reduce the color richness. And I also move to skin, the node skin. I try to drag the skin tones a little bit. All right, so I think that's perfect. Okay, so I use the same one. Copy, drop it on your, here. You see, that's now. but I see that the exposure is a bit high, especially the highlights are, so I need to drop a little bit the mid-tones and drop the shadows and go here. Drop the highlights, lift up the shadows a bit, around 10. lift up the mid-tones for one and yeah I think it's perfectly done and for the skin for the look I will go back and apply the richness so here the before after before after so it's fine now I'll do the same copy the, all, all the notes and oh sorry copy all the notes and drop them here. As you can see, it's a bit dark. Why? Because we apply the same thing. So what I need to do is go to the curve adjustment, try to lift up and lift the mid-tones a bit. Drop the shadows and drop the shadows a bit. I will try to add more to the shadows around 25. Add the same thing to mid tones. Drop the highlight a little bit. Here for the highlight, I will go for minus 50. Uh, right, let me see outside. Now the before, now it's done. Before, after, before, after, before, after. That's good. 
Okay, so this is how I do my color grading. I go step by step. And if you have a um, professional camera like Sony, um, Sony cameras or Canon camera that has C log or S log, you will do more perfect color grading because those are the real log. But this one is only um, Rec 709 with a custom curve, okay? To give you a wide uh, dynamic range so you can work with more colors. So here, guys, um, this is how I do my color grading. And I hope you guys like it. If you have any other questions, please drop them in the comment section. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram. Subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos in the future. And yeah, leave a constructive comment and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.